It's Freedom Files with James Burns on American Freedom Radio. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is June 2nd. 2011. I'm James Burns, your host, along with Adam, man in the helm, back at AFRHQ in Austin, Texas. I'm coming at you live from Shreveport, Louisiana. We'll be joined momentarily by Bob Chapman. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Uh, big news uh, as of yesterday, uh, there's a lot of really ugly, nasty economic news we're going to go over with Bob and uh, so many other things going on around the world as well. Uh, now we're going to live, of course, as usual like we do every Thursday, 3 p.m. Central, to the one and only Bob Chapman. Bob, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, we get cut off there for a minute. Yeah, it was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. But fortunately, you're here with us this afternoon. And uh, the first thing I'd like to go over with you today is uh, probably the big news from yesterday, all this uh, really bad economic news that came out. It's really terrible. And uh, I'm even surprised. That the numbers, um, I talk about this in um, Sadie's issue in the editorial in the beginning of the forecaster. And I thought we'd get growth of two and a half to three and a quarter percent in the first quarter, and then two to two and a half in the second, and then zero to negative in the third and fourth. Now, this has been expedited by a problem in the first quarter, 1.8% growth. And uh, that tells me it might be 1, 1.5% in the second quarter. Maybe two if they're lucky, but I don't think so. And uh, the last two quarters of the year, everything's turning down. So I would suspect at least zero growth, maybe minus 2% of GDP. Now, the question is, as I talked about a year ago, that there would be a QE3, and uh, I thought there would probably be, a, at that time, a stimulus as well, but we're not going to get that. I mean, they're fighting over the budget Democrats don't want to cut anything. A lot of the Republicans don't either. And so uh, we could end up with a fight and uh, no extension. It's possible. If I, you know, if they had to do it right now, I'd say no. Um, so what does that mean? It means the Fed is going to have to step in to keep the economy going, not only to buy $1 $1.6, $1.7 trillion worth of treasuries, but also uh, they may have to find ways to inject money into the economy to keep it from collapsing. So they may end up spending 2 to $2.5 trillion dollars because they're not going to get any help from Congress. Uh -huh. So they are going to have QE3. They're already talking about it because of these dreadful figures and other factors. So I expect that um, we're going to get an additional quantitative easing, creation of money and credit. And if they don't, the economy will collapse. And if they do, eventually, the economy will collapse. Because they're not solving the problem. And the Fed and the people behind the scenes know that they can't solve the problem without purging the system. And they don't want to do that until they want to do it. And that's probably when they get, they get five wars going on now. Now, maybe they'll have another five or ten. And when they get to that, they'll start drafting people to get them off the streets. And then World War will start, and all those people have been running around the streets in Europe complaining about just about everything, and rightly so. <clears throat> they'll round them up and 
put him in the military so he can go get killed. We shut him up. That's where it's all going. One of the largest traders uh, came out yesterday uh, saying the big D word that we are, quote unquote, on the verge of a great, great depression. I knew that it was only a matter of time before people were going to start talking about this, Bob. Uh, question. Do you think that we're on the verge of a great, great depression, or do you think that it's already happening? I predicted 15 months ago, two years ago, February, that we had begun in inflationary depression, and the inflation would get worse over time, and that's in process. And that'll go on. I'll probably have a QE4 or 5, who knows? And when they're ready to pull the plug and have their war, uh, they'll go ahead and do that. In the meantime, all your freedoms will be taken away from you. They'll be checking on everything you're doing because you're, you know, you're a potential terrorist just as an American citizen. And so they got to watch you. Sort of like 1984. And uh, the United States is going to be become a horrible place to live. And it's not going to improve because your politicians won't go to bat for you. They only work for the people who pay them, which are banking and Wall Street, insurance, pharmaceutical corporations, Chamber of Commerce, transnational conglomerates. So they own your members of the House and Senate. So what's left? Well, in the middle of a third world war, probably be pretty easy to have a revolution. So that's what you're going to get. Because you waited too long. Unfortunately, that is probably the truth. We're talking to Bob Chapman. His website is the international forecaster dot com. Uh, Bob, what are your thoughts regarding what happened last week with the not only the passage of the uh, Patriot Act for another four years, but also how uh, Obama quote, quote unquote signed the Patriot Act with this auto pin? Never has been done before, and according to the Constitution, uh, the president has to physically sign a document into law. But this time, they decided to simply rubber stamp it. What, what is your take on all this? It doesn't make any difference. They do anything they want. As far as they are concerned, there is no Constitution. Simple. It's the end of it. I mean, anybody that can tell me that there is, let me know. They do anything they want. It's not only the federal level, the state level. I mean, you got police running around murdering people robbing them. It's horrible. And they're all being federalized. Pretty soon they'll be carrying a patch that says uh, U.S. police. And I know people have seen the patches already. Physically. And uh, the next step is they'll become more like a Schutzstaffel, which is called SS or maybe even a Gestapo. And then when everything gets turned upside down, they and the people who are in Homeland Security and the TSA and the organizations like that will try to suppress the people for government and they'll be wiped out. So if well, any of them are yeah. listening, that, that's where this is headed. And the public will not take any prisoners. So if you get a job like that, you better get rid of it. Because it's not a very healthy profession. You're absolutely right, Bob. And for anybody that, that questions your prediction, it's, it's not a prediction. It's happening right before our very eyes. It's happening here in the state of Louisiana with this uh, Click It or Ticket campaign. It's a nationwide campaign. But for the past year or so now, they have been doing checkpoints, random checkpoints, where they get a couple of cops, they, they set up roadblocks, and they you know line up 100 cars, and they check them to make sure they're wearing their seatbelt for their own safety, of course. But while they're at it, they, they, you know, they check your you know, driver's license, your proof of insurance, your registration. And of course, 
they do a background check on you to see if you have any outstanding warrants. And th this is becoming a very real reality for us. I mean, this is probably happening in several other states throughout the country. They used to say, in German, that means, where is your papers? It's pretty simple. The condition in Europe, in Germany and Italy, during the 1930s, was a trial run for what you're going through right now. you find that out later. Most of you don't know anything about anything, unfortunately. And that's why I do these programs. You find out what serious crap you're in. And uh, I didn't live in Germany during the war. But I was there not long after the war was over. And uh, I know what it was like. And they didn't do that then. Although everywhere you went, like today, they want to see a driver's license. And the same was true in Germany at that time. But during the war, they said, uh, your papers. And they would ask generals for their papers. So uh, this is where this is all headed. And uh, I picked up... Uh, a link this morning, an inter interview by Lou, I'll think of his name in a minute, and William Gregg was the one who was being interviewed. I've been following him for years. He's a good writer. And uh, he's kind of made a specialty out of that, finding out what these people were up to in law enforcement and TSA and Homeland Security. And we're already there. I mean, I have a f uh, film, a link, and sad these issue coming up. Of a woman who had another woman who was searching her in the airport, put her fingers into where she shouldn't have. That's how bad this is. I mean, it doesn't get any worse than that. It's just horrible. And the woman screamed for the police. And finally, this is all on film. Finally, a policeman came and wouldn't help her. She went to press charges. He said, no. They're all in on it. They all want to keep their jobs. And they had a problem, maybe in... This small town or that small town, the problem doesn't and probably will never exist. But you get in medium-sized to large organizations, you get a real problem. And the time will come when they'll be told, you go over there, there's a demonstration going on. The first thing you do is beat them half to death. And if they won't move or do something, start shooting them. That's how it will start. And then out of nowhere will come the public with the ARs and AKs, and there won't be any police left. They'll all be dead. Because Americans are armed, and they're not going to give up their weapons. Maybe 30% would. But my goodness, there's 450 million weapons in the country. You've got to be kidding me. So if you get that kind of a job... You should seriously consider retirement because that's what's coming. And if you don't do what your superiors tell you to do, you'll be fired anyway. Not very good. Either they'll be fired, Bob, or worse, they'll have an accident. <laughs> they'll be suicided. Well, I don't know at that level, but uh, I tell you, it's not a good situation because they're caught in the middle. And the only thing they can do is resign. And then they don't have a job and they can't feed their family. If they stay in there, they'll get killed. And all of this equipment's not going to save them. I'm, I guess they never heard of headshots. Uh, you know, ridiculous. The 
public's got better weapons than they have. And, you know, there's 80 million veterans out there. I'm one of them. And 40 million of them have been in combat. I mean, do you really want to have, well, I guess 50,000 agencies in the country. And I don't know, we'll say there's a thousand. That's a half a million. I mean, does that really stand up against 150 male members or maybe more of our country? And maybe 100 million are armed? I mean, how long do you think they're going to last? 500,000 worth against 100 million. I mean... How long do you think the Chinese army would last if they landed on our shores, so to speak? I mean, maybe they'd overwhelm the people, but I think their losses probably would be 20 or 30 to 1. And so this is where this is headed. And it's because you people didn't do your homework. You were too busy watching the game, enjoying life, the American dream, and you didn't care about anything else. Well, now you better start caring by putting dehydrated and freeze-dried foods away. You know what? You're right, Bob. You're absolutely right. Well, we got to go to a break. We'll be right back. Bob Chavin is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. More of him right after this. You're listening to Freedom Files on American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is June 2nd, 2011. James Burns along with Bob Chapman. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Moving over to Europe now, Bob. Uh, I mean, there's something very, very nasty happening in the EU. You have this uh, superbug strain, the super toxic strain of E. coli basically spreading throughout Europe like a plague. It's already killed 18 people, sickened more than 600 1,600 people. Uh, it's spread to several countries like Germany, Austria, Denmark, France, Netherlands, Norway, Spain, Sweden, France, England. There's even reports of three suspected cases in the United States. Um, there, at least 500 of the victims have developed some sort of kidney complications that could be fatal. And there's also reports that uh, this thing could destroy the liver. What is your take on what's happening? Well, it doesn't get any worse than that, you know. Anything happens to your liver, you got a real problem, usually a terminal one. And it's dreadful to see this, and uh, the scientists say that they've never seen this strain before. So I don't know whether it just happened, or what if our government, government's created it? I mean, who knows? I mean, we've seen some pretty horrible things that they've done recently. So it, it's certainly not good. And uh, I don't know where it's going to end. I mean, it's, I mean, this is the first time I've heard of it. You know, I woke up today, you know, looking over the news, and um, all of a sudden this came out from nowhere. And I, I guess this has been going on for, I don't know how, how what kind of period of time in uh, Europe, but it's finally gotten so bad where it's uh, made the headlines here in the U.S. And they're even reporting that there is even three suspected cases in our country, which means that it could very well spread throughout the United States. Well, maybe that's uh, what will happen. Uh, I'm still undecided whether it came out of the laboratory or not. I mean, these people, they're so bad, they lie so much. You know, you don't know what to expect. And there's probably no cure for it. If it's this new strain that they're talking about. So, um, be on the lookout. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, that's my fear is that it's going to be something really nasty and that there might not be a cure for it. And everyone that survives, I mean, it's obviously <laughs> affecting uh, the food. So they're probably going to have to destroy a large uh, number of uh, vegetables and fruits 
which is going to have an even worse effect on the uh, food shortage and uh, the food prices. So look to food prices to continue to go up and uh, food shortages to increase. And that could easily lead towards even more riots and, you know, speeding up the, their plans. Well, it's only a matter of time before America has its demonstrations. And um, we've seen them proliferate all over the Middle East and through Europe. And um, I just got a letter in from London. And you'll see it in the England section of the International Forecaster on Sandy. I reprinted it. And uh, the cost of doing business is impossible. Inflation is about 12%. He didn't mention that in there. Unemployment is very high. Um, the rich do what they want, and the rest of the people don't have a very good life. And um, it's not like the British to have revolutions. But uh, they're sitting on a powder keg there. And now they're all upset that the United Kingdom uh, might be in place without Scotland. They're going to have a referendum. And whether they'll separate from England remains to be seen. But there's a good chance of it. People are fed up. I mean, you got a queen. She wear trillions. It, that's with the T. And what does it cost? Ten million pounds a year to operate her castle. And you know, there's just no comparison between the rich and the poor in England. Never has been. And most of the money was made illegally. But they don't care. As long as they get the money. So uh, that could happen in America. And I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. And I think people are rather surprised that we haven't seen demonstrations. We're starting to see them in places like Texas and Austin where the big brouhaha is over the TSA groping people and forcing people to go through x-ray machines, which they keep all of the images of. And uh, people can get, get cancer for them. But they don't care. It's a control factor. They want to put them in everywhere. Stores, malls, trains, etc. They don't care about your rights. Even Europe hasn't gone that far yet. Although in England they have lots of cameras in the streets so they can watch everybody. Sort of like 1984. Yeah, that that's exactly what it reminds me of with what's happening in uh, London, and it's also transpiring throughout the United States. You have uh, New York; they're setting up more cameras. You have other cities like Chicago, uh, throughout the entire country. Even in small towns, you see lights uh, going up at intersections. And one thing that I found really scary about what happened last week with the whole um, anti-groping law that they tried to pass in Texas was the D. OJ and the TSA came in and they basically threatened the state of Texas. They, they, in a sense, they threatened Texas with an act of war. They said, if you pass this law, if you sign it, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come in, we're going to cancel all the flights in Texas and basically declare a no-fly zone over Texas. And when I think of that, Bob, I, my, my mind goes straight to what's happening in Libya. Well, you're right. And uh, Gaddafi doesn't stand a chance. Uh, he'll make a very poor deal if he makes one. But he probably won't. They'll probably liquidate him. 
and uh, they've been targeting civilians over there from the air, which they'll continue to do. Uh, the idea is to kill as many people as possible. You've seen that in Iraq, Afghanistan, and you've also seen it in Pakistan. And it's going to continue. These people are out of their minds. They might look and seem sane, but they're not. I mean, anybody that would want to do something like that would have to be mentally disordered. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right about that, Bob. I mean, these these people are complete insane. And like you were mentioning a moment ago, they don't care about the Constitution. They don't care about the law. Obama doesn't give a damn about the quote-unquote War Powers Act. He's going to keep pushing it forward. The war, NATO says they're going to continue to carry out operations till September. Uh, over 700 people in Libya have died. That's probably a conservative number. And my fear is that with, with that threat made by the DOJ and the TSA to the state of Texas, if Texas or any other state was to pass such an anti-groping law, I mean, are they, what, what are they going to do? Are they going to start bombing cities in our own country to stop us from passing anti-tyrannical uh, laws? Like, um, I just, I mean, I know that they're capable of it, but I just wonder how the people would react if they actually did declare a real no-fly zone over the Lone Star State and, and started lobbing missiles into, into Texas. You never know. You never know. And I think uh, in the final analysis, it's going to be up to the military, and uh, they're going to have to choose sides. All indications yeah. that I get is that they'll back the people, not the government. But, you know, things change. And even then, you know, again, you know, we're talking about 80 million people who are well-armed, most of them veterans. And, you know, you've got all the military police and, and police together in the country, um, let's call it 10 million. Uh, eight to one odds are not very good. No, they're not. And chances are a number of those men and women in uniform, whether they're in the military or in the police department, will hopefully, when the time comes, do the right thing and, like you say, side with the people against this tyrannical regime. Well, I think you'll see a lot of that. And the ones that stay will be liquidated. And the military is well aware that what the public wants, and uh, they, they're behind the public. They're certainly not behind the president, that's for sure. They don't have any liking for him whatsoever, for, as far as I can see. And I talk to a lot of these people. And if, if he does happen to have any support within the military, it has to be a very small minority of the military population. I mean, especially after the past nearly four years of his presidency where it's become very apparent that he doesn't even fake trying to act like he cares. I mean, he doesn't even try and pull it. Uh, I mean, I like, I like to compare him a lot to W, but at least W, I think, was a little bit better at faking that he cared. I mean, even though he didn't really give a damn, he, he was just as happy to see, you know, all sorts of wonderful, terrible things happen to us as uh, the next one of these cronies. But Obama, he don't care about anything. He's, he's, he'd rather go off to Ireland to drink some pubs, you know, go to the pub and have a you know, pint or hang out with the uh, Prime Minister and the Queen of England than to come and walk down in Joplin, Missouri and check up on people who have just uh, had their lives ruined. Well, all I can tell you is you've got to get prepared uh, because it's going to be very difficult. And I hope you're listening. And that's why I do these shows, comments, and the programming that I do 40 hours a week, there's nobody that even comes close to it. And uh, I'm just trying to tell people this is the truth. You better do something. You're right about that, Bob. I mean, you've been warning people for years, decades now, that this day was coming. You and several others out there. And with each passing day, with every single uh, police state law they pass, with every single right, liberty, and freedom they shred away from us, and every single war that they get us involved with, it becomes more and more apparent that we aren't heading towards freedom and liberty. We're heading towards tyranny. We're heading towards this police state. And if people don't see it by now, then I, I just have to wonder how far their head in the sand happens to be. I mean, maybe we'll have to go get a crane and, and pull them out. Well, they have, will have suffocated by then, yeah. probably on their own stupidity. 
And it's a hard thing to say, but, you know, that's really what it amounts to. You know, what are they thinking about? I mean, they know what we talk about. They've heard a program here and there, but they're not interested. They think everything is going to be just fine, just like the people on the Titanic. Yeah, I mean, that that's how I see the people. I see them as unconcerned. They're not worried. Oh, the, the ship hit a iceberg. Oh, it'll be okay. Because yeah, they, they believe what they were told, that this ship cannot be sunk. You know, they say, oh, the ship's unsinkable. They say it was. Oh, the, these companies are too big to fail. We have to bail them out. Uh, the country is so great and awesome, uh, it's going to be around forever. They don't seem to realize that nothing lasts forever. And that's for sure, including us individually. <laughs> the only way we get out is by going to heaven. Or wherever else we're supposed to go. <laughs> But oh, I suppose I there are those uh, that'll be permanent visitors in a, another warm locale. <laughs> we'll find out when we get there. Exactly. That, that's my philosophy on you know life after death. I mean, I don't I don't claim to know exactly what's on the other side, but I do believe that there is something beyond this life. I don't agree with atheists. I think that there is something beyond this existence. But I think the the question is what exactly it is. Hopefully it's better than uh, what what's on this side, uh, and hopefully uh, whoever you know has already passed on that we've loved and known will be there waiting for us. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. dot com. Final segment with him coming up right after this. You're listening to Freedom Files on American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files Live. It's Thursday, June 2nd, 2011. James Burns, final segment with Bob Chapman this afternoon. Be sure to check out his website and subscribe to the International Forecaster, theinternationalforecaster.com. Uh, Bob, uh, one of the final things I want to go over with you today is um, this um, report that came out from the Global Commission on Drug Policy. Basically, what they're saying is the global war on drugs has failed and uh, see, quote unquote, the war on drugs has failed with devastating consequences for individuals and societies around the world. Uh, they released a 24 page uh, paper on this. I mean, that's kind of a big duh there, isn't it, Bob? Well, they know this from the very, very beginning. And uh, there was uh, no effort to interdict the drug trafficking because uh, it's a major supplier of funds to. The central intelligence central intelligence agency and the banks launder all the money and they usually end up taking about two percent and so they get fat on it every five or ten years they say to one of them like they just did to wachovia you laundered 253 billion dollars and we're going to fine you of course nobody goes to jail and um so they pay a fine let's say let's say the fine is five billion dollars so they get to keep $437 billion. It's a pretty good deal, isn't it? So that's why it was never stopped. The greatest fortunes in the last thousand years have been made in the drug trade. And no one knows that better than the royal families of Europe who ran it out of, China, out of India and into China part of what expansion is and was all about. And um, and so it, it continues on because it's a cash cow. And, uh, you know, America's, quote, uh, good friends with Colombia. Well, I can understand why. You know, I was looking at a picture that I had cited, must have been about 10 years ago, why uh, Mr. Grasso, who was the head of the New York Stock Exchange, had a private meeting with the two communists who were running the major narcotics operation in Colombia. I mean, just incredible. I mean, why would he be there? Well, it was obvious why he would be there. Because the money was going through the banks and into the New York Stock Exchange. 
Well, why else would he be there? And so these are the kind of things that have been going on for years. It's not going to stop. As long as dingbats in America are willing to consume unbelievable amounts of drugs, it's going to continue. You read about this phony war on drugs in Mexico. None of the big cartels have been touched. And the reason why is the government wants a bigger piece of the action. And the CIA would like to take it over. And that's what it's all about. 35,000 people are dead over a five-year period because President Calderon did what he was told to do. And the people who are in Mexico, no matter what party they're in, uh, they know what the score is. They know people are going to do use drugs no matter what. And that's $30 billion a year flowing illegally into that country. And that's going to continue. And the war will be over as soon as the administration changes, which is uh, about a year and five months from now. And it will change. There will be a new president. And uh, they will make deals with the narcotics uh, purveyors. They're called narcotraficantes. And uh, there'll be no more kidnapping. It'll be against the rules to shoot each other. And uh, the con- country will prosper. And just to show you what that means, in the production of oil, I take in $45 billion a year. Now, drugs is $30 billion. Uh, money coming from the United States from legal and illegal aliens into Mexico is $22 billion, $23 billion a year. And tourism is about 16 maybe $15 billion. It's down from where it was at 18. And so that's where the foreign exchange comes from besides what legitimate business does. And so, and I don't know those numbers, incidentally. And so that's what it's all about. It's all about money. Mexico right now is prospering. You, you've got real estate for Mexicans building their own homes is booming. And the average house, I'd say $300,000. There's no downside in prices. They keep right on building. And the people who are building have buyers. And the people who own property are building, and they pay cash. You buy a lot for $100,000, that's what you pay cash. You ready to build a house? You got to put up the money to the architect, and uh, and then he hires the crews that go off and build a house for you. There is some financing throughout Latin America, but makes up 1%, maybe 2% of all the homes built. But it's booming. Inflation's officially 3.5%. By the end of the year, I think it'll be 4 And uh, GDP, last year and this year, will be up 4.5%. And they didn't use any stimulus. And they bought almost $100 billion worth of gold. And they may back their currency with silver, the second largest producer in the world. So I don't think Mexico's got any real bad problems. Of course, they don't want the 30 million illegal aliens in the United States to come home either, because that would cause a problem. In fact, there's been many instances recently in the last couple of years of uh, mayors of of towns and governors of states in Mexico visiting uh, the politicians in Texas and Arizona and California and New Mexico and Colorado saying, look, find them something to do. We don't want them down here. 
We don't have any houses for them. We don't have any jobs and on and on and on. So that's a real skinny. That's what's really going on. Do you do you believe that it's uh, – I, I was kind of confused. Did, did, were you mentioning the, um, the uh, president of Mexico was going to be replaced or the president of the U.S. is going to be replaced or both? The president Calderon of Mexico. Okay. Uh, and I know that for a fact, and that will happen. And uh, another party will take over PRI, which is called PRI, in Mexico. And they already control the Senate and the House. So they get some pretty sparkling figures running. And um, and it'll probably happen. And uh, all of that problem with violence will be gone. They just make a deal. I mean, the rich always have problems because they have money and bad people know that. They don't have to be associated with narcotics or anything. There's a lot of bad people in this world, although I must say, in the case of Mexico and Central and South America, almost all the real hardcore professional criminals migrated to the United States. So there's not a lot of crime in those in, in those countries. Uh, the exception uh, from... Uh, final minute, Bob. Uh, how do people get the international forecaster? Uh, the forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. Uh, we publish by email on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and it runs around 40 pages each time. We have a hard copy that goes out twice a month, and that's for the people who are not on the Internet. Everything you need to know every week is in that publication. Get a free introductory copy by going to theinternationalforecaster.com. The International, F O R E C A S T E R dot com, or go to www dot I N T F O R E C A S T E R dot com, int forecaster dot com. If you want a question answered, and we answer everybody, or if you'd like a copy of either, or if you'd like a copy of our latest gold and silver. Recommendations, you email us at Bob, B O B, at intforecaster.com. Bob at I N T F O R E C A S T E R dot com. For those of you who like to phone in, toll free, 877 479 8178. 877 479 8178. You get a copy of either, and if you'd like to be a subscriber, they make an offer there for a free subscription. And it's awesome. Thank you so much, Bob, for joining us today. I will talk to you next week, sir.